I'm sitting inside a 1985 300TD. Our subject today is going to be the procedure for center wood console removal. Anytime you're going to change either a window switch or any of the upper switches, I highly recommend that you remove the wood. I've seen people try to use screwdrivers and pry tools to get the switches out. It's possible, but you're going to end up chipping the wood just like you see here. Most of the procedures I'm going to show you will apply to all 123 chassis sedans, coupes, and wagons that were built from 1977 to 1985. There are some slight differences in the upper control panel, which will, I will go into a little later. To begin with, you're going to have to figure out how to remove the lower wood piece that surrounds the shifter. This is a little bit of a mystery, primarily because there's no exposed fasteners. Center console shift wood removal has to begin with removing the ashtray. Reach over to the tray, tip it forward, and then reach in behind and push down hard on the back of the tray while releasing the spring that holds it to the frame. And then you can pull and release it. If you look closely, you'll see we have two Phillips screws that will have to be removed. Many 123 owners are surprised to learn that there are no screws that hold this wood to the center console. Once the ashtray frame is out of the way, it's a simple matter of reaching in, pushing slightly forward on the wood, and lifting up the front to release it over the top of the shifter. Then push it back. You don't want to lift too high because you can break this pin in the rear. And once the rear pin is free, you can lift it up over the shift knob. The next step is to remove all the wiring plugs underneath the switches. You'll note that you won't be able to raise the wood very high until you at least disconnect one side of one window switch. In this case, I'm going to do the right side. Once those plugs are loose, you can tip it a little further and then unplug the speaker switch, the flasher switch, and the remaining switch plugs on the left window switch. Next and final is the wiring plug for the right side power mirror. I'll warn you again, if you're not careful, it's possible to break off this rear plastic pin. And over half the pieces I remove, the pin is missing. So that gives you a pretty good idea on how few people know how to remove this wood piece. For many, removing the switch panel wood cover can be even more mysterious than moving the shift cover. If you look again, there are no fasteners and no exposed screws holding this wood to the center console. Most of the damage I see on this particular wood piece is caused from a lack of understanding of how it's attached. There's a metal backing plate on the back of the wood, and when you pry this piece off of the panel, you have to get your pry tool in behind the aluminum, not just the wood. You reach in behind and very carefully pry on it until you feel it snap free. You can see here this piece has really been abused. It's obvious someone got in behind the wood and pried out on the wood instead of getting behind the aluminum backing plate. And you can see someone's tried to epoxy it. It's kind of a mess, but I think with a little work I can straighten this out and re-glue it. To gain access to the climate control switch panel, you'll have to remove the five Phillips screws that hold this plate to the center console. With the screws removed, you can pull the plate out and even pull the panel itself forward. I also like to remove this panel when removing these upper switches. With the climate control switch panel pulled forward, I can easily reach my hand up and behind this upper wood piece and gently push forward on these switches. This will allow me easy access to them without any damage to the wood. This is also a good time to talk about switch lighting. On this particular model, there are five bulbs that control the lighting to the climate control panel and to the upper switches. Four of these bulbs are located on the climate control panel itself. They're snapped in place. You can remove them by pulling back and then just pulling straight out on the bulb. You should put new bulbs in anytime you have this switch panel out. The fifth light is buried deep under the dash, as you can see here. It controls the optic wiring that goes to the, each of your upper switches. If you don't have any switch lights in the upper panel, suspect that this particular light bulb 
is burned out. To get to it, you'll have to reach in with your hand and unsnap that bulb holder and pull it straight back to replace the bulb. Well, that should about wrap it up for this video. Putting everything back together is easy once you learn how to take it apart. And all I encourage you is please be kind to your wood. I've seen too much broken wood, too much damaged veneer. Learn to do it right. Wood will take care of you if you take care of it. Okay, students, let's end with a quiz. Does anybody know how to remove a headrest? And when we were filming, my poor cameraman didn't know how to get the headrest out. Well, when you pull up on it, it just stops. <laughs> Leave it to Mercedes to hide the fastener again. You look closely, there's a little button hidden right behind this rear upholstery panel. And if you push in on the button, then you're able to get this silly thing out of here. Look at that. Thanks for watching and be sure and check out my website for new and used bulbs, wood pieces, and switches.